What's poppin' people? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different than usual. We're going to be combining two different effects. Today we're going to be covering the Tracked Glow effect, okay? We're going to be mixing stabilized motion with a nice little glow and glint, whatever you feel is best. I recently did this on Switch OTR's latest video, Lock In. Make sure you go check it back for his return. Come on, man. You already know how we roll around here. Here's the example we're going to be doing today. Pretty simple. Clip was a bit hard to work with, but you can see how it works on the Switch OTR one pretty well. So enough talk, let's get straight into it. Bow. Okay guys, so here is the clip we're gonna be using. Let's get straight into the tutorial. So first you need to find the spot where you're gonna do the transition. So for example, looking through mine, I'd rather transition when he starts breathing on it, you know, like blowing, no diddy. Anyways, I'm going to cut here with Control Shift D and then simply, copy with control D and now we're going to be adding the effects on the watch. Now what I'm going to do is rotoscope out my subjects. Mine's going to be the watch here. Yours could be anything. It could be, I don't know, there's glasses or whatever you've got for your clip. I'm not going to go into detail on how to roto brush because there's a lot more tutorials that are more focused on that area. We've got a specific effect to create here. So if you don't know how to roto brush, go learn how to do that and come straight back. Anyways, I'm going to finish rotoscoping this out and then we're going to move on. Okay guys, so now that I've done that, if I disable the bottom layer, that is my rotoscope done. Again, doesn't have to be completely accurate because you've got this underneath. We're only adding some effects on top. And please listen to what it says down here, which it said before, where it said do it on full resolution. I'm doing it on half just to show you really quickly. But when you're doing yours, make sure you're doing it on full. Now it's time for the effects. First thing you're going to add is deep glow. If you don't have deep glow, right, all you can use is the standard After Effects glow and add in a tint. In this case, deep glow is 10 times better. Make sure you go for a bluish looking tint around, let's say there. Bring it more towards the middle. Kind of so you've got like a similar kind of look to that. That's fine for me. As you can see, in my opinion, that's a little bit too much. So all I'm going to do is simply go onto the deep glow lower the exposure and maybe even make the radius a little bit smaller now we're going to be adding the glints in so all you're going to do is add sapphire's special glint option if you don't have it it's not necessary you could just leave it on the glow option it's completely up to you what you do with this but as you can see that's looking terrible right now so first thing you're going to do it's so easy go on to load preset wait for it to load up now once that's loaded choose whichever one you think looks best Make sure you're playing it through as well so you can see everything that's happening. Now, I want something that's a bit more low-key, but you can, it's still noticeable, isn't it? So, Realistic Glint 3 is the best option for me, so I'm simply going to load that in. And now, that is our Glint finish. It's a bit bright, so all I'm going to do is simply lower the brightness. So now, all you're going to do is simply go into your bottom layer and your top layer and press Pre-Compose, okay? Now that's done, all you got to do is simply go on to your tracker tab. If you don't have this up already, all you can do is go on to window and then it should appear down here where it says tracker. Just click that and it will appear somewhere else. See, that's got rid of it for me. So all I'm going to do is go back on, press it and boom. Now the option we're looking for is stabilize motion. So click on that for your new pre-composed layer. And now here's the part that's a little bit more tricky for beginners. You need to find a spot that's very consistent and has a bit of contrast to it so you can track it properly. For example, I wouldn't track the watch because it's moving all over the place and we're trying to track the movement of his head. So let's say I might choose his teeth, the middle of his glasses, where the beanie ends, anything like that. But I'll get to you once I finish that. So once you've found your target, all you got to do now is press analyze. This one over here plays one frame forward, so you can do it once at a time if it messes up like mine. All you got to do if it messes up is manually adjust it each time and just pray that, you know, it does it itself. If you're very confident and it's going to be very easy, all you can do is simply press this one here and it will do it all for you. Now I'll show you, I don't think mine's going to work that way, so let's give it a go. Yeah, as you can see, it's kind of working, but then you can see it drops off there. So I'm going to press reset and I'm going to redo all of that. So now that's mine done, looking a bit like this, completely fine. All I'm going to do now is press apply. X and Y, OK. And now you have a tracked video. It's making sure the viewpoint is staying focused on our stabilized point. So everything else is compensating and moving for it. OK, so... The only way you're really going to fix that for such a short little effect here 
is simply do a little zoom transition. Now the way you're gonna do that is click both of them in 3D, your previous layer and your new layer, motion blur both of them, right click somewhere over here, new camera, make sure it's a two node camera, then go down to point of interest and position, keyframe both of them on your previous clip, go a little bit more forward and simply use your dolly tool, which is this one here. It basically zooms in and out. So I want you to zoom in, okay? Just zoom into somewhere like, I don't know, here. I've got a very awkward clip here, so I imagine yours will be a lot easier to use. So now, as you can see, a little gap appears on the side here. That's completely fine. The best thing you can really do here is just get this one here, which is the pan tool, and just move it a bit to the right. Compensate for it a little bit. And now we've got something like this. Again, I've got a very awkward clip here, but you can see from the Switch OTR one, which was the first example I showed you, a real-time version, that was a lot better of a clip to use, and you can see how it works out. So basically, that's how you do it. But there's one thing missing. That's just way too, well, not smooth, isn't it? So all you gotta do is what I did. Simply press Control alt y and then add brightness and contrast to your new adjustment layer. Make sure you keyframe both of them. Press U to view what you're looking at. Drag these three frames to the left. Control C, Control V. Move them three frames to the right so you have an zeros and zeros on each side. Now simply lift them up, yeah? Something like this. Let me lower this so you can see what I'm doing. Put the contrast up a little bit as well just to make it a little bit nicer. Go to the point where it transitions, which I've already done. F9 all of them. And now we finally got to the end. Real simple trick, but makes everything a lot better. And this is our final result. We've come to the end of another video. Hope you enjoyed it. More importantly, I hope you learned something. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Obviously, I've been I've been out a month in it. Allow me, uh, sue me in it, sue me. I'm back in full effect though, so don't worry about that. More tutorials, more tips and tricks coming. We're coming back better than ever, yeah. So stay tuned in. Have a great day, night, whatever's going on your way, love.